Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. I would like this to be an informative channel, but I want you to relate to it. My partner steps aside so completely, he has no idea what's coming. I've given him an idea of what might be discussed, so it is not a mystery, but other than that, he doesn't know. Dear ones, I want to do something that sometimes is dangerous to logic. And what I mean by that is your logic will take over. So it's dangerous information because your logic intercedes. I don't like to give you lists. And the reason is because you always make them hierarchical. Number one is more important than number two or reversed. Anytime anything is delivered, one, two, three, four, there is a tendency with a logical brain to put one above the other because it was mentioned before the other one. So let me ask you, what other option do I have than to make a list? I cannot give you everything at once. That would be quantum. So I must give things to you one by one. I number them. So I'm going to set this up. I want to give you information that is for all old souls and light workers about those types on the planet that are working in a solution mode to solve new energy puzzles in cooperation with other light workers. In order to do that, I'm going to have to itemize what some of you are because of your Akash, what some of you are doing because you're here. I'll give you some names to consider. But I want you to think for a moment. Everything I'm going to give you is in a circle. Think of a ring for a moment. Beautiful, together unbroken and around the ring are attributes numbers if you wish and so it doesn't matter on the ring where you start or which direction you go you'll get all the attributes and the knowledge will be in the ring now in linearity in a straight line you call time I'm going to have to give these things to you one at a time but they are not more important than the next one or less important than the one before. This is where I want you to start. To understand that what I'm about to give you doesn't have any importance one above the other. It's all together. Now I've just given you information also. It's one of the most difficult things when spirit talks to humans, or even one human, we can only talk to you one item at a time. Sometimes you take the first item and you never listen to number two or three or four. And your truth becomes number one. If you were to open your heart and your mind and listen to all of them and take them all in and realize the truth is all of them you would be a wiser spiritual person. But it is the bias of humanity that singularizes one thing at a time because of your linearity that creates what I'm about to talk about. Spiritual systems on the planet that you try to fit into normally carry what I will call a singular purpose. No matter what that spiritual system is or what you call an organized one or even a religion, has you looking at rules. 
And it's up to you then to fit into all the rules you can, obey them the best you can, and the idea is sameness of purpose. In some, you would all wear the same thing, act a certain way, meditate at a certain place, pray at a certain place, do this or that at a certain hour, bow in this direction, and all of you do it in the same way. If you take a look at any complex system on this planet or in the universe, in the galaxy, you're going to find parts doing different things. If you look at physics, parts are doing different things. They're dedicated to different energies. If you look at chemistry profoundly, the parts are coming together in order to create other things. Everywhere you look in nature, there are parts. One supports the other. The very system of life with oxygen and carbon dioxide is made of all the parts of life to keep you alive. What if I told you suddenly all of the parts are going to dress the same and do the same thing? <laughs> You'd say that's not going to be a uh, a workable solution and you'd be right there is an elegant system in front of you about old souls now let's back up you're here for a reason for a purpose old soul if you have awakened to the truth a truth that is so big and so beautiful it's a truth that doesn't make anybody else wrong. It's a truth that enhances all humanity. And the truth is this, God is inside you. Another truth, the energy on this planet is shifting. Another truth, old souls, those who have come and gone and come and gone and come and gone, carry great wisdom for this time on the planet. Another truth. Old souls are waking up to different tasks in order to supply a solution to the new energy. So I want to talk about the various slots that you go in. <laughs> Very linear. And you may recognize yourself. It's complex, so I'm going to make it simple, and I'm only going to create five today. Now, everything I talk about from now on, you could analyze later and you're going to find hidden meanings in most of it, specifically in the numerology. Dear ones, I give you messages within messages so that you can study things later and see that there's more, much more than what I present in the language of my partner. I want to give you some good news. Dear ones, there is a beautiful, beautiful system at hand right now. And you're working the puzzle and you don't even know it. Some of you question it because you're used to the singularity of spiritual systems. Some of you will look at my partner and say, I can't do what he does, therefore, I'm not carrying the weight as an old soul that he is. You don't understand. You just don't understand. And so let this be a time for understanding. Not just understanding, celebration. There are those listening to this who need to hear this. It's easy. You all have different jobs. <laughs> And the thing that drives them and puts you into that areas or slots in the circle that we want to create in the ring is your Akash. The energy of who you were and what you've done creates who you are now and what you're doing and how you feel about it. That is specifically spiritual. It can also be in 3D, what you're interested in, your talents. But we're talking about old souls and spiritual purpose, what you're doing while you're here. 
It is dangerous to categorize humans in any form because the singularity of your bias is then going to carry it further. Well, I'm a this, I'm a that, therefore I'm going here, or I'm not doing this. I have to ask you to suspend all of that and just listen. I want to tell you about old souls, what they do, and how they work together in the ring. The beautiful ring in a circle that's golden. It's a circle of love and creation. And the old souls and the light workers come into this planet and a perfect solution, perfect numbers, creating perfect balance. And you never even know there's a system. <laughs> I want to start with my partner and those like him. I'll use terminology I haven't used before. Akashic entanglement. What do you know about the word entanglement? Very little, actually. It is a fairly new word created by your physicists. And basically it means a shared reality. If two things are entangled in physics, they both have the same reality even if they're removed one from another in different places. It's a quantum expression. Shared reality. One who is entangled when they're Akash is sharing the reality of something that pushes on them from the past. And it's hard for them to decipher the reality of that which is earthly from the reality, reality of that which is either in the past or on the other side of the veil. And so they are driven. Now there's a word in the universe, in the galaxy, in the solar system that is used in astrology. This is a metaphor. The word is Yod or Yod, Y-O-D. In astrology, it is an alignment of three things that is unique and special that doesn't happen very often that creates an energy of those born with that to be pushed and focused in an unreasonable way. <laughs> they live and breathe what they think they need to do. And it comes from the Akash. It doesn't happen, dear ones, just because you're born. It happens slowly because you go into realization. You realize it. And this means that is unrealized becomes realized. It goes from the, the non-existent to the existent with conscious decision. In other words, if you choose not to accept some of these things, they'll never occur to you. But once you start the path of examination, they'll capture you in a good way and push you so hard that everything you do is about one thing. The category like this of Akashic entangled old souls are those who are pushed to do work. Some are channelers, some are authors, some are writers, some are, are speakers. And their lives are not normal. All that they do in their waking hours is think about why they're here. They'll push themselves and appropriately understand the health issues they have going to a place that is a goal till the day they take their last death about one thing, whatever it is. Singular, focused, pushed, and beautiful because they get a lot done. 
Now there is a tendency. No, there's not a tendency. There's a bias. No. There's a way of thinking <laughs> that looks at them and says, oh, look at that, I should do that. And this is what we want to talk about. That's one of five things in the ring, all supportive of each other. There must be those who have an entangled Akash in order to push this new energy forward as they do. It has to be. My partner knows this, and he's seen himself change. He now realizes this is all he's going to do. He realizes he's never going to retire. Somehow, that would be a betrayal of the Akash that says he's going to push until it's over. And he's got others just like him. That's all they want to do. They see the beauty and the splendor of the other side of the veil, and all they can do is Show it and show it and show it. Tell about it. Write about it. Be it. That's all they want to do. One of five kinds of purpose, you might say. It's not a mission. Don't use the word mission. Suddenly you're on a military mission. It's not this. It's entanglement with all it is that is sacred and spiritual and Akashic. He's done this before. That's Akashic entanglement. He is comfortable with it now. And it's all he wants to do. That's number one. What is a one in numerology? It is new beginnings. That is the whole purpose of those who are pushed by Akashic entanglement. They're so focused, everything they do, everywhere they go, it's a beginning. They don't end anything. It's never complete. <laughs> it's always new. Number one. Number two is similar. Partially <laughs> entangled Akash. Ones who don't have quite the push, but they still feel as though they do. But they're a little more relaxed with it. It's okay to retire. <laughs> they feel they have a purpose on the planet. Now these, number two, deal with duality. And they deal with the human body. They are the healers. They are the ones who are looking for solutions that will support number one. Because number one tends to overdo it. He needs number two to heal. They're system workers. They've got it figured out. They come up with the systems that help humanity. They're focused too. They've got a partially entangled Akash. They can remember They've been healers before. They can remember the systems that they're working on they've used before. They are so sure of it. They want to write about it. They want to teach about it. It's so obvious. Layers and phases. And what it does is it ends up being a piece of the puzzle of the whole. But specifically, it helps number one. It's a support group for humanity and number one. Number one would push themselves without eating, unless they had somebody to tell them to eat. Number two would develop what to eat. <laughs> there is a beautiful system of helping. It's like a, a Swiss clock where one notch fits in the other. The thing that ties these together, and I'm telling you even before I give you the rest of it, the thing that ties all this together is synchronicity. When I'm done and finished today, I will have given you five types. It's a tendency for you to say, which type am I? Did I tell you you could be 
two or three of the same? Did I tell you it, there's a crossover? Did I tell you there are gray areas? Did I tell you it was quantum? Don't try to fit yourself into these. Just know they exist, and they will fit to some degree. But understand this. Some of you have already experienced the synchronicity of being here, of listening, and understand you're part of the, the mechanism of this beautiful clock that moves around in your own time and fits. One fits to the other because you all support one another. Just wait till I tell you about number three. Three is the catalytic number. It moves things. The very existence of number three is catalytic to anything that comes in contact with it. A catalyst is something that stays the same but changes what it comes in contact with. I'll tell you who these are. These are the meditators of the planet. And they're Akash. <laughs> Their Akash is so comfortable because they can sit and meditate for days and they will come out refreshed. They will sit in one position. What are they doing? I'll tell you what they're doing. They're holding the energy of all the others together because their consciousness is steady. It's quiet. It's beautiful. It sets a stage that all the others feel. I want to tell you about this clock, this ring, that when number one comes to frustration, number three is part of him. He feels number three. The meditative side is not part of number one at all. Push push, go. And number three then takes it to another level in a quantum way, shares it with number one and number two. And they have peace and they relax and they know all is well because number three is here doing their job. Number three has had lifetimes of being monks all over the planet to sit and just be. There is so much power there. And as a light worker, have you ever, my partner listened to this, have you ever <laughs> looked at number three and said, how can they do that? It's not for me. They just sit there. <laughs> now you know. They just sit there and steady the planet. They steady all of the other numbers because they absorb them in such a way. Now, I didn't say they were grounders, did I? That's coming. They're meditators. They create a peaceful countenance and they're catalytic. Whatever comes their way is more peaceful because of it. You got some here. You can just tell who they are. Number one and number two need number three desperately. But number three also needs number one and number two because just sitting there doesn't accomplish what number one will do. Are you starting to understand the circle? Does it make sense to you that there would be a system where old souls do different things for this planet? to make it work. Not all in one uniform, not in all one gender, not all in one doctrine or belief system, not bowing a certain way or doing the same thing, not singing the same song. Totally, completely unique and different and fitting together like a fine Swiss clock. Number four, what do you think number four is? <laughs> if you've been numerologically educated, Number four is the Gaia number. Have you ever heard me tell you before that Gaia is related to human consciousness? 
that what happens that you call the planet Earth is connected to you profoundly. If you ask the ancestors, the ancients, it's the first thing they knew. It had to be Gaia. There was no technology. Gaia gave them their food in certain ways, the weather. All of these things, that was the most important thing they had, Gaia. You've lost that. The connection is not as important, but it is. Let me tell you about number four. Some of them don't even know they're light workers. They just know they're connected to the earth. But they're passionately connected to the earth. You can't pry them off a tree when they're hugging it. <laughs> they need to be part of Gaia all the time. Question. Dear Cryon, you're going to give us these, these phases, these parts, these, these compartments. Uh, can someone change one compartment and be in the next compartment in one lifetime? Humans, why do you do this? <laughs> yes, you can do whatever you want to. Now, I want you to think about that. Can a number three become a number four? Can number five, which you've never even heard of, become a number one? The system is in a circle. Of course you can. There are ways for you to pick up energies, to learn things, to move around. So it is dynamic. And that's the other thing that you're not going to carry around with you. As soon as I itemize something and you put yourself in there, it's forever. It isn't. Like you get in a box and shut the door. No. You're part of the circle. You move with it. You know who number four is also? An animal whisperer. An animal lover. Someone who can literally speak to that which is the consciousness of animals or understand them. One who will then talk to the plants and actually feel the plants have something to say. They love the planet. That's number four. Now, if you're number three and you're contemplating your navel for three days, you're not going to really understand the gardener who gets up very early and plants things and loves it, just loves it. But if you're in a circle working together, and you're intermingled, maybe even entangled a little, then you're all helping one another and you all have a piece of your specialty. Did you hear that? It's part of a grand system. The animal whisperer is whispering for number one and two and three. And three may not hear it or know it or two or one, but it's happening. It needs to be because human consciousness, human consciousness is connected in quantum ways, not isolated. You think you have one soul doing one thing? My partner showed you today that the, that the confluence of consciousness is what moves things. Not one, not two, not three. It's a it's a confluence. It's mixed together. If I'm telling you there's a ring of workers that help one another because they intermingle their consciousness, but they have specialties, that is you. But when you put it all together, it creates things. This is what a quantum system is like. Made of many parts that mix with the other parts and some of you don't even know you're mixing it just is you get help from those who are meditating if you're not a meditator they become part of you the whole is stronger than the parts because of it that was number four. Oh, there are so many fours <laughs> it calls to you some humans never move off the peg 
of the love of the planet Earth, and they won't even call themselves an old soul. They're just an earth worker. They don't even know about their Akash. They just know for some reason all they want to do is be with nature and the animals. That's all they want to do. Never realizing that it's shared with number three and shared with number two. And the one who's working on systems and working on systems is also hugging the tree. And that Gaia is felt in all the departments because of number four. That peace is felt in number four because of number three. Because the one is doing the work and sitting there for hours and hours still and meditating and peaceful for the rest of them. For the number one who's going out and pushing and pushing and pushing, it's to change the planet for the rest of them. You're beautiful. Number five is the last one for now. Change. Who is the biggest changer of the planet? Well, it has to be number one. It isn't. Number one, she does her job, he does her job in a ways that's so focused and pinpointed that it's going to take years to make a difference. And then only to certain people. No, no. It's number five that makes the biggest difference. Number five has more old souls in it than any other department. <laughs> I'll call them the anchorers. They anchor number one, two, three, and four. What good does it do to hug a tree all your life? Who are you going to talk to? Who are you going to help? <laughs> the answer is all the rest of them because of your relationship to the planet. Do you see how this works? Now, number five is going to anchor number four, especially number three, who would float away if there weren't an anchor. And number one, who doesn't even want to stop to smell the roses. <laughs> number five is the old soul who goes about their life without writing a book, without being on stage, without doing anything important, quote, unquote, as you perceive importance, not understanding that they are walking like the masters walk day by day on this planet and spreading compassionate action. Compassion, the key word, we've used it over and over, is that which this planet needs to change. And by your actions and those who see you, this planet moves. Every day you go to work, you have friends, you have family. How do you treat them? How do you act on the freeways? How do you act in the hallway? Is it compassionate? Do you see God in others? That is an anchorer. It does more to help this planet and number one through number four than any of them together. The anchorer is the compassion that this planet needs so that the, all the others can work. You all need what you all carry. Who are you? Maybe you're a combination of several. It's okay. Because they're not singular. I put them in, in five compartments. Now I'm going to tear off the walls of the compartments and mix one through five together in a blender. That's quantum. You don't really understand that. But now you know that there is a system. That's why there are so many varied interests. And you can say, which one are you? Or what are you doing? Not understanding. You're doing everything. You're supporting all the others. Number five, I want you to listen to this. What you're doing by simply walking this planet in a compassionate way is critical. Without this, one through four won't accomplish anything. Number one can, can pound the message home to an uncompassionate earth, and it won't matter at all. Number two can have systems and healing to an uncompassionate earth, and nobody's going to hear it. Number three is going to sit and ohm for years, and it won't do a better good. 
to an uncompassionate earth. Number four, can hug all the trees they want to and be connected with guy, but unless there's a compassionate consciousness on this planet, nothing will change. Number five, it seems like I'm saying you're most important. Not really. You're just important. <laughs> when you leave this place, think about this. Every action of kindness and compassion you have that is outside of the human nature that you've studied and said was correct or that you learned in psychology. Everything you do that is compassionate changes those around you. You're noticed. People notice because that's not the norm. Have you seen the television programs that those who market television programs in an old energy think you want to watch? Let's tune in and watch families argue. As though you didn't have that already. You have to have some more. <laughs> How about a program? Let's tune in and watch compassionate things happen. Let's watch people being nice to each other and victories happen and tears of joy and compassion because people love each other and do things that they didn't expect. That those most benevolent outcomes, what kind of a program would it work? It will someday. If you look at the marketing of today and what's happening today, you see an old energy. It's still there. That's why you stick out when you're compassionate. People don't expect it. You're standing in line. And you see a stranger who has to do something before you because of their schedule and you move away. And you say, come on, get in here. And they look at you and go, are you real? <laughs> That's a small little compassionate thing because you're looking to see the needs of others, comparing them to the needs of yourself, realizing what you can do for a most benevolent outcome and help their synchronicity. That's mastery. That's mastery. Number five. Dear ones, this is the way humans work. A system put together of old souls and workers of the light where everyone plays their own specific part, maybe two roles, not just one, into a confluence of energy that works this puzzle in a beautiful golden ring. You don't all wear the same outfit. You don't face the same direction. You don't speak the same language. You don't even know each other. And this is what's going to change the planet. This is just the beginning. There's more. But the premise is clear. That everyone has their niche depending upon who they are, how long they've lived, what they're feeling is that which they're supposed to do. It starts to explain, perhaps, some of you who feel called in one direction and not another and are beating yourselves up psychologically because you don't think you measure up to your neighbor who's doing something you think is important. That I want you to change right now because God sees you all the same, work in the puzzle the same. Leave this place differently than you came with knowledge that is uplifting and a change of attitude about what might be happening to you. That's enough for today. I'm crying on in love with humanity. And so it is. <laughs>